Hello, everyone. My name is Josh Stevens, and I'm the CTO at Backbox. Hello, I'm Perry Greenwood. I am a senior product manager here at Backbox. And we're going to give you a quick introduction to who Backbox is, uh, what we do as a company, our products, and we'll cover three distinct use cases during the, the detailed breakout sessions. So why network automation and why now? Um, we recently conducted a survey of several thousand network professionals. We had this done by Wakefield. And I'm going to skip over the high-level detail and give you some of the, the bullets we came up with. Um, when I saw this data, I was surprised and a little concerned because when I see this, it tells me that while network engineers around the world understand that network automation is important and they need to automate operations, they have very little confidence in their ability to do that successfully. And I think this is because over time, the industry has treated this as a really complex problem, and we've, we've tried to meet that problem with complex products. Um, our approach at Backbox is a little bit different. We provide a product that's very easy to use. It's sort of the any man's network automation platform. You don't need special skill sets or, or Python skills to use it. And we solve very specific use cases that allow our customers to take back control of their day and gain time back from operations. So we are uh, about a 12-year-old company. Backbox got its start in Israel back in uh, 2009. Uh, originally, Backbox was an MSP, and uh, we were managing some very large uh, financial services companies and their networks. One of those companies had a firewall that went down, and when they went to recover it, they realized they didn't have any backups, and it took them an extended amount of time to recover from the outage. The founders looked around the market and said, well, is there anything else we should be selling to our customers for this? Maybe we can charge for managing these firewalls. They didn't find anything they liked, so they set out to build a product. The product started as a firewall management uh, utility doing backups and upgrades and over time grew to be a full featured network automation platform. Today we have about 600 customers. Uh, we support over 180 vendors. Uh, vendor support is something we add every single week, so it's not something we stress about when a customer has a device type we haven't seen before, it's easy for us to add that. Uh, we have resellers around the world and we're sold in over 70 countries. Historically, the company focused a lot of the go-to-market initiative around Europe. Um, but about a year and a half ago, we took a Series A from Elsewhere Partners and moved to go to market headquarters to Dallas, Texas. We've left R&D headquarters in Tel Aviv and Israel and began scaling the company. Uh, we manage over 100,000 networks worldwide. Uh, a large portion of our customer base are service providers and MSPs that are doing a managed firewall or managed network service on behalf of their customers. So why Backbox for trusted uh, network and security device automation? Um, we make it really easy to operationalize and automate those network operations tasks that otherwise become really burdensome from a, a t and &E perspective. I talked to an MSP manager two weeks ago who said that he was analyzing the overtime his team had spent over the last few months. And there were a lot of nights and weekends spent on doing Fortinet OS upgrades because of all the CVEs that have recently been announced on Fortinet. And he said, this, there's got to be a better way of doing this. And I said, well, yeah, that's exactly what our product does. It automates upgrades and backups and all those things that are super time consuming. Um, we do auto, best in class automated backup and restore, that single click restore even for complex restores, uh, OS updates, CIS benchmarks, inventory, uh, closed loop automation around uh, vulnerability management. And we'll go through a lot of these use cases today. A few of our valued customers, uh, you can see the list here, but we have customers of all different verticals uh, from around the world. Three use cases that we'll cover uh, in a little bit of detail, and then this, I believe, is the last uh, non-technical content slide for the group today. We're going to spend the vast majority of today's time in the product, um, actually walking through how to use it, how to do some of the things we talked about at a high level, hopefully answering questions and having a, a good discussion about it. Um, I'm not a big PowerPoint fan, so my slides are really, really light. Um, but to give you some examples of some of the problems we solve for our customers, um, the middle one is a large nonprofit health system down in Houston, Texas, kind of in my neck of the woods. Um, they had a very, very large UC environment, and they were having both security and performance issues because of antiquated OSs on those devices. Um, it's easy to think about in today's world that Zoom and, and other UC platforms are generally pretty reliable and, and you know, pretty robust. 
Um, but imagine that you've just had a stroke and you're in a small hospital and you're relying upon unified communications to project a high definition image to a stroke specialist in a bigger city. And you have a very small window of time to do a specialized medication in order for that stroke to be abated. Um, in those scenarios, UC management is super, super important. And they were having a lot of difficulty managing that environment. We, we went in and worked with our professional services team to customize some things for them to make it work better for what they were trying to do. And then we rolled this out across their environment and we're still in place there today doing upgrades and backups for the, the network UC environment. Um, TravelX is another really good example of a, a customer we've been helping for a while now. Uh, they're a financial services company in over 70 countries with about 1,200 stores. Um, very large, complex network with a dispersed team. And they had a challenge being able to keep their configurations in check. Uh, there was no grooming being done in an automated way, so they had a lot of drift occurring. And they found that that drift was making it very difficult to maintain performance and reliability, as well as security on the network uh, on a global level. So they implemented Backbox, began managing those configurations, uh, both for drift and automated, automatically remediating that drift through grooming, uh, completely eliminated the errors, uh, and they're able to manage this very large multi-vendor complex network now with a lot less effort. Yeah, I've got a quick question for you. This is just kind of a high-level thing that we've seen throughout this network field day. This is uh, Kevin Myers, by the way, at Stub Area 51. We've seen a lot of products come out of the service provider space in this networking field day. And if I if I understand your origin story right, uh, you started in the service provider space and now are you know getting into large enterprise. What what are the common what are the common business challenges that you know that you saw in that space? that it seems like you're you're focused on moving into enterprise. Maybe you've already been an enterprise, but it sounds like you're moving from service provider heavily into enterprise, have some enterprise clients. What are those common things that both those environments needs that's part of your foundational business case? That's a really good question, Kevin. Um, for those of you that didn't hear, his question was, what are we seeing in common between the service provider customers and our enterprise buyers? We've been selling to both for, for over a decade now. Um, but we do find that we have a strong offering for especially uh, MSPs within the service provider environment. They tell us the same thing. They tell us that their teams are overwhelmed with work. They have a larger number of changes to be made to the network than they can possibly begin to handle uh, by hand. And that they've got to do something to give back bandwidth to that team. Uh, they've got to do something to minimize the amount of work that they're spending uh, on these types of regular operations tasks, like backups and upgrades and things like that. Now, with the service providers, they're, they're trying to make a profit from this. You know, they're charging a monthly fee for a managed firewall service, and the enterprises certainly aren't doing that. But they're both saying to us, can you help us do the same amount of work with fewer people? Uh, or said differently, can we take the same number of people and do twice as much work? Uh, and, and so that's really a big part of what we're hearing from them. We're seeing a movement away from uh, Ansible and some of the more uh, coding heavy uh, automation platforms to simpler products like ours that are a little easier to save time on. Um, and I think it's because everyone's just overwhelmed. You know, there's so much work to do right now, not just with operational moves, ads, and changes, but with security updates. The CVEs are coming out every single week for most vendors that we work with. Uh, so the upgrades have become just a never-ending process that you have to stay on top of. So I think those are the things that we're seeing consistently from service providers and enterprise buyers, that they're really focused on security and that they need to find a way to increase the throughput of changes they can have on the network without decreasing reliability. Okay, great, great. question. Re quick follow-up, and then I know you guys have got to move on. What is it? We've seen several, several solutions that are focused on web UIs, automation frameworks, process frameworks to try to abstract some of the complexity of the code. And, and I think network engineers are pushed to learn code and learn Python and learn Ansible and all these things. What are the drivers from the business that you see that are pushing towards this kind of a platform where I'm gonna have a UI and a simplified framework with you know security controls, process controls, and all of that to build your own workflow for automation? What is, what's the big driver in the enterprises and your customers to do this versus just running Ansible and Python? Well, I think the driver is that it's incredibly difficult to hire and recruit and retain network professionals that have both networking backgrounds and you know, Ansible or Python backgrounds. Um, if you can find them, that's awesome. Uh, it is a special skill set. Go ahead, Kevin. Let's like you have a follow-on. 
No, no, no. That answer, that was great. That, oh, okay. That was, that was, I was just curious because we've seen this, you know, a couple of times. It's been kind of a theme. So I was just curious as to your take on that. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting challenge. I mean, I would, I would love it if we had a plethora of available network engineers with security training and, and Python skills. We just aren't finding those people. So um, it's really about just supply and demand there. Great question.